Kirsty Cullen, CEO at the Optimum Health Clinic. And today I am joined by Jess Thompson, our Director of Psychology. Good morning, Jess. Morning, Kirsty. So today we thought it would be helpful to talk in a little more detail about our 90 day reset program here at the clinic. And with that being said, the importance of psychology tools within the context of the MECFS journey. Jess, can you first of all explain the difference between the old outdated stigma that MECFS is all in the mind and actually the role that psychological factors have to play in this condition? Because it's actually a really important distinction, isn't it? Absolutely, it is really important. So as all MECFS sufferers know, it's a very real physically debilitating condition with a wide range of physical symptoms. What we know from our clinical experience and relevant research is that psychological factors do play a role. So, for example, there are some predisposing factors, certain personality subtypes, uh, which may be more susceptible to experiencing the illness. These types are the achiever type, anxiety type, helper type and trauma type. We know that certain traits of these particular ways of being can be a predisposing factor for the illness. And then we have a second layer of psychological factors in that when a person becomes really unwell with the range of symptoms experienced in MECFS and fatigue related conditions, there's a really understandable psychological response to that, as there is with many physical illnesses, and often lots of anxiety around what's wrong with me, how long will it take to get better. And there's a lack of clear prognosis, which actually sort of escalates this anxiety even higher. People aren't kind of given a clear understanding necessarily of the illness and they're not given a clear prognosis. So really, we're looking at two layers of psychological factor. The stress from the uh, psychological subtypes that can be a predisposing factor and the stress and anxiety of experiencing the illness itself, which can be a perpetuating factor for the illness. OHC, obviously, we have the 90 day reset program, which introduces almost a a psychological toolkit for our clients. Can you explain a little more about the key focuses of the program for our listeners? Yeah, sure. So the 90 day reset is a 12 week course and it has three main areas of focus. So the first focus is resetting the nervous system into the healing state. The second focus is on emotional healing. And the third focus is how to integrate all of this into day-to-day life on the journey. So we begin by giving a really detailed understanding of the Optimum Health Clinic model of CFS. So particularly looking at the predisposing factors, perpetuating factors, and the maladaptive stress response. And there's a focus on the latest research into how stress affects the various body systems and how the body can get stuck in what we call the maladaptive stress response. The focus initially is helping clients to understand this maladaptive stress response and teaching them tools to reset their nervous system, because we know the body can only heal from any condition when it's in the healing state. So we help clients identify the ways in which they are creating stress with their thinking, and that's addressed with some really simple tools and techniques. Once we've worked on that cognitive layer of how thoughts can create stress, we then teach clients the importance of the emotions in their journey. So helping them to understand and identify the ways in which they may have been avoiding their feelings, how that can kind of perpetuate the stress state in the system and some tools for how to reconnect. There's also modules on mindfulness, meditation, and we teach something called emotional freedom technique, which is a fabulous tool which clients can use themselves. There's also a focus on pacing and integration. So once the system's in a healing state, it becomes about how to integrate all of what they're learning into creating a robust and sustainable recovery and creating a life that's kind of balanced and healthy. What is the actual structure of the programme, Jess? Perhaps you could explain a little bit more about that and the time commitment, because obviously that's a really important consideration when you're managing depleted energy reserves. Absolutely. So the course is designed with fatigue related conditions in mind. It has two main components. Each week, a new video module is released. It's kind of drip fed so that people 
uh, don't feel overwhelmed by all of the information. It's kind of uh, released weekly. And the practitioner delivering the course will be giving guidance as to which of the, the videos to really focus on. So there's videos to watch at home. They can pace it themselves by watching it, for example, in 10 minute chunks. And there's lifetime access to these videos and resources. So they don't need to watch all of it within the 90 days. The PRAC will guide them through that. Also, when they watch their video content every week, there's a one hour group coaching call where the clients are invited to share their experiences, ask questions and be coached in how to apply what they're learning to their individual situations. And this pattern repeats for 12 weeks. There is a break midway through. And at any point during the 12 weeks, the clients can also request additional one to one support from the practitioner in one to one sessions. And of course, we've had some really positive feedback from clients who have attended the course, but I'm really interested from your perspective, what are some of the key benefits that you see as psychology practitioners, as people sort of progress through the course itself? Yeah, absolutely. We've had some fabulous feedback. For most people, actually, the initial part of the course where they're given a thorough understanding of the condition, that leads them to feel much more empowered on their journey. And that alone can help to reduce that maladaptive stress state. Also being given really simple tools, techniques and strategies which they can use in their day to day lives helps them to have more of a sense of control. Really, they, they get the sense that actually this is something that they can really do something about. And that's been a big part of the feedback we've had, just how empowering it is to understand it and be given the tools to do something about it. Another piece of feedback that often comes is just that wonderfully kind of supportive element of the course in terms of the group aspect. So meeting other people on their own journey, supporting each other, being able to share experiences. And finally, I think what many people find and feed back to us is that they may have tried different things in the past to help, like meditation, for example. But what the course really gives them is a way of kind of pulling everything together into a map that they can see themselves in. And they get that navigation from the practitioner to help them kind of journey on that map. And of course, that practitioner guidance and navigation can be so fundamentally important. So Jess, further to your explanation of OHC terminology about the healing state and the maladaptive stress response, I wanted to discuss how this relates to the limbic system. The limbic system is a term I suspect our listeners are hearing with more regularity, but might not be completely familiar with what it is, how it links to MECFS and some of the concepts that we're discussing here. So just to explain a little more, studies suggest that the function and health of the limbic system is a really important focus within CFS work and may be directly linked and involved with some of the symptoms that we might classically see. So to explain what it is, the limbic system is areas of the brain that are essentially involved with our emotional and behavioral response. The hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain that forms part of the limbic system, is also involved with the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which we understand in simplistic terms as being key to fight or flight responses. And of course, that fight flight response is the antithesis to the healing state that you described, Jess. So there are numerous factors that can be responsible for activating or arousing the limbic system. And those include chronic stress and trauma, but also things like chemical exposure, infections, which may all lead to increased hypersensitivity and activation of this system. But what's really interesting is that limbic system overactivation may continue even when that original stimulus or trigger, the chronic stress or the infection has gone or been removed. So we may need to work specifically to calm that 
ongoing activation. And this is an example of where the tools that we use can be so effective, isn't it, Jess? Absolutely. That's one of the main focuses we have. We talk about it in terms of the maladaptive stress response, that that limbic system is kind of hypersensitive and hyper regulated, switched on. And we teach clients how that can be created through psychological stresses, for example, and the other stresses that you mention. And the tools that we give them, they can use throughout the day to dial down that limbic system response to get the system into a healing state. It's really one of the key focuses of the programme. Thank you, Jess. So if you would like to find out more about the 90 Day Reset program, you can request an information pack at our website, which is www.theoptimumhealthclinic.com. And if you are interested in signing up for one of our courses, you can arrange a discovery call with one of our new client coordinators. And that can also be done at our website. Jess, thank you so much for your time today. You're really welcome. And thank you to everyone for listening. We hope you found it helpful. Thank you.